Good evening and welcome to week 13 of the high school football season. I'm Steve Hare, the Chagrin Valley Conference's Sports Information Director, and thanks to our CVC TV sponsor, Ohio Center for Oral, Facial, and Implant Surgery, I'm going to preview this all CVC showdown in a Division VI Region 21 semifinal here at Nordonia High School. It's the 10 and 1 Cuyahoga Heights Red Wolves who enter the game as the number five seed in the region against league rival Kirtland, the number one seed. The Hornets enter the game with an 11-1 record and a slight advantage considering they beat the Red Wolves in the regular season 35 to nothing. But that game was played nearly two full months ago on September 15th and both teams head into the Sweet 16 with a lot of confidence and momentum. Cuyahoga Heights has reeled off seven straight wins since that loss at Kirtland and have outscored their opponents 233 to 47 with four shutouts during that span. Kirtland's lone loss of the season came at the hands of the Chagrin Valley Conference Chagrin Division champion Perry Pirates, who finished the regular season 10-0 and earned the number one seed in the Division 5 Region 17 postseason. The Pirates will play number five Garrettsville Garfield in a regional semifinal tonight at Maple Heights. Tonight, we're going to see two teams with rich histories and traditions square off head-to-head -head for the 14th time since 2010 when Kirtland began its 13-year run to the playoffs. The Hornets are 12-2 during that span against the Red Wolves, with both losses coming in 2016 when Cuyahoga Heights beat Kirtland 21-0 in the regular season and again 17-0 in the postseason on the way to an appearance in the Division VI state championship game. For the Red Wolves, this is their 26th trip to the postseason with state runner-up finishes in 2016 and 2017 and four regional championships to their credit. Kirtland is in its 19th postseason tournament and the Hornets seek a seventh straight trip to the state championship game. The Hornets are 61-12 and in the playoffs with state titles won in 2011, 2013, 2015, 2018, 2019, and 2020 and five state runner-up finishes. Buckle up folks, this is going to be a battle between two of the all-time great coaches who have created winning cultures within their programs. Now let's hear from the coaches. First up, we've got Cuyahoga Heights coach Al Martin, who might, the BB, who might be the busiest football coach in the state right now, as he also coaches the Red Wolves girls basketball team. He's balancing his time between football practice and basketball practice, and we caught up with him after his basketball team's first scrimmage of the season. Coach Martin knows the Red Wolves weren't at their best in that September 15th matchup, but he's confident the team has improved and gained confidence in the week since, and he's looking for the Red Wolves to play a much cleaner game tonight. Um, we hope to play a lot better. We really, you know, we turned it over a lot. We weren't really physical. I don't think our kids were ready for that game. It had been a few years since, since we had played them, and um, they do such a good job. So we, we hope to be a lot better better today. Both teams employ similar game plans. They both run the ball effectively and play hard-nosed, aggressive defense. With Kirtland's Jake Laverde and Cuyahoga Heights' Fletcher Sturgill, both capable passers, will likely see a bit more activity through the air in this clash of the Titans. Sturgill suffered an injury in week one of the 2022 season, but he's healthy and better than ever. So he, yeah, he's he's gotten better. Like, he, he got injured last year, the first game of the year and he kind of lost all that experience as a junior. That was his first year starting. Um, and he's worked really hard and he's gotten a lot better. He's improved every week and he's a lot better quarterback now than, than when the first time we played them. Um, he's got a lot more confidence and, and our young receivers have gotten better. Our offensive line's gotten better. Um, so yeah, we are a little bit more balanced now than we were the first time we played. There is no secret formula for Heights to avenge that regular season loss against the Hornets tonight. The Red Wolves have to protect the football, control the line of scrimmage, and wrap up on defense. A couple of things they didn't do very well in that first matchup. Well, I think we turned it over three or four times the first time we played them, and that's been a little bit of a problem for us throughout the year. When we've had games where we've played clean, we've been a lot better, as all teams are. But we obviously have to take care of the ball. We, we cannot give them any short fields and any easy opportunities. They have a potent enough offense without a short field. Um, we're going to have to be much better up front. They, they, they kind of took it to us last time. Um, particularly their defensive line in front, five, six guys against ours. I think we need to be a lot better up there. Um, and then defensively, we got to tackle better. There were times in the first game we were kind of where we needed to be um, and didn't make the play. And obviously, they have some elite kids, some kids who are really talented. And it's not easy to tackle, but we, we have to do a better job near the line of scrimmage, um, getting to their backs and, and being able to, to tackle and get their guys down. 
Heights fullback Francis Connors enters tonight's game riding a wave of confidence after a big postseason, and the Red Wolves will count on him to gain those tough yards, but also to impose his will against the fast and aggressive Kirtland defense. Yeah, it's really important. I mean, he's a really good two-way player. Um, he's been a really good player for us for many years. We, we moved him to fullback, you know, and it, it took him a little while to kind of get a feel there. And he's he's really physical. He's really a determined young man, and he plays really hard. It's a lot on his platter. Do we need him to play really good on, on uh, during this game? Yeah, we do. Like, he's got to play really good on both sides of the ball. Like, he doesn't have the luxury of just – being able to play one side really good and take some plays off on the other side. He's at a key position defensively for us inside against their tough running game. And obviously they do a really good job up front. So he's got his hands full running the ball too, but we need him to be great. Um, and he's prepared really well. He's had a really good week of practice and, you know, he's going to play really hard no matter what. Connors was a ball boy for the Heights run to the state championship game several years ago. And those memories have inspired him to add to the Heights legacy. You know, ever since then, our goals have been a little different. You know, they showed us that it is possible, you know. So ever since then, you know, we've been just striving for greatness every, you know, off season, regular season, everything. So this whole year, it's been our goal. You know, one of our big goals is, you know, beat Curlin and you know, we're going to get another crack at it. You know, we're grateful enough to have that. So we're just excited to play some football. That September 15th game at Kirtland was a setback for the Red Wolves. But Connors and his teammates did what all good teams do. They learned from that loss, improved upon their weaknesses, and have put in the work to earn another shot at the Hornets. Um, you know, I feel like we're coming at it differently. You know, we had a lot of young kids then. You know, some guys get we got back, you know, off injuries, and they're back and playing as hard as ever. And I feel like we've grown a lot since that game. You know, that was our first big test, and we didn't answer. But since then, you know, we've showed that we can play in big games, and we, we have played in big games. I think our team has just gotten so much better since then, and we're ready for it now. According to Connors, that loss led to the Red Wolves self-reflecting and coming together as a team. With the team gelling, the trust in each other has never been higher, and, Con and Connors hopes that leads to success this evening. I think we just needed to come together as a team more. You know, ever since then, you know, every single practice we've given probably 10 times the effort, everything, you know, at just trusting each other every single play. You know, doing your job, knowing the guy inside you is going to do his job, guy outside you is going to do his. And ever since then, you know, we just played as a complete team and everyone's done their job and just playing great. From a player's perspective, what are the keys to victory tonight? Uh, you know, just everyone do their job, trust your brother on the team. You know, it's going to take all 11 of us on every side of the ball. You know, every play is going to matter. We might not win them all, but we definitely want to and hope to win more. Um, everyone's got to do their job, trust each other. And now let's hear from the Hornets. Head coach Tiger Laverde and his program's success over the past decade speaks for itself, but the Hornets aren't satisfied. Kirtland has made six straight trips to the state final four and has reached the state semifinals in an incredible 11 of the last 12 seasons. As impressive as their run has been, the Hornets aren't satisfied with their back-to-back -back state runner-up finishes and have been focused on finishing the job this season since a 14-6 loss to Marion Local in the state championship game last December 3rd. Well, this group is, yeah, they're very excited about, uh, you know, tomorrow night's game. And uh, we don't look too far ahead. You know, they know what happened last year. Um, you know, really, last year was a great year, going 15-1 and one and losing by a touchdown to a, a really, really good Marion local team. So, you know, I, I don't look at last year as a disaster. I think it was an incredible year for those kids. And, um, you know, to, to go 15-1, and one, there's a lot of teams that would take that. So... Um, and we're just going to try to do the best we can this year. You know, we, we don't look ahead. Um, I know Kaga Heights has given us a lot of problems in the past, and Al Martin does such a great job that uh, I think it could be a really good game tomorrow night. The Hornets are in a bit of a different situation this season following that loss to Perry earlier this fall. Kirtland hadn't lost a regular season game since that 21 nothing setback to Cuyahoga Heights in 2016, a remarkable span of 57 straight regular season wins. Again, good teams learn from their losses, and Kirtland is no different. Well, we certainly learned that uh, the little little things are huge. Um, there was a couple little, little details that we didn't execute right on the first couple drives um, that really hurt us in that game. We drove inside the you know, 23 times in the first half and came away with zero points on all three. Missed a field goal and got stopped on fourth and two twice. Um, and that really hurt us. And we, you know, look on film, you could see like, you know, we just blocked the wrong guy a couple times. And um, if we'd have just blocked the right guy, I think we'd have got first downs and continued those drives and maybe got some points. So 
you know, when you play a good team, you know, all the little things matter. And that's what we talk about every day. Like these teams that we play are going to get better and better and better. And all the little details really matter a lot. It's never easy to beat a good team twice in one season, but that's the task the Hornets are faced with tonight. Kirtland must remain focused and understand that the Heights team it will play tonight is vastly different than the one it played on September 15th. Yet Kirtland's keys to victory remain similar to every other game it has played this season. Well, tonight, you know, usually when two really good teams, you know, meet because they're 10 and 1 and they're a really good team, the team that makes the least amount of mistakes, you know, probably moves on. And we played them the first time and I think they threw two or three interceptions and fumbled twice in their own end and gave us short fields and and that one got out of hand early and it really wasn't if you look back on that game you know it was just you know about four plays that turned the game for us in that first half and and kind of took the wind out of their sails and uh, i don't think that'll happen again so we want to be you know make sure we play mistake free football for sure and now let's chat with another Laverty about tonight's game. Sophomore quarterback Jake Laverty stepped into the starting role as a freshman last season, and all he did was lead the Hornets to a 15-1 record and a state runner-up finish. He grew up in a hurry last season, and this year, as a sophomore, he's even more confident. Oh yeah, definitely a lot growing up from last year, just getting bigger and stronger and physical, more physical from the offseason. And it was nice being able to play last year because just more experience, being able to be out there more and just learn more. Kirtland is well known for its dominant run game, but with Laverty evolving as a passer and several dangerous weapons on the perimeter and in the backfield, no opponent is safe focusing on just shutting down the run. Yeah, our own line's really good and our running backs are doing great this year. So when we run the ball all the time, defenses sometimes uh, pack in the box so we have to be able to throw the ball a little bit. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll throw the ball a little bit, but we'll, we'll, we stick to the run. Kirtland has bigger goals this season, but the Hornets are experienced enough to know they can't overlook any opponent. And Laverde and his teammates are locked in on the Red Wolves. We're, we're locked in tonight because we know we already played this team earlier, and it's harder to be a team the second time. So we just don't want them to take one game for granted and not look ahead and just go with the flow. Well, folks, that's going to do it for our pregame show, and all that's left is to see which CVC squad can outlast the other to earn a shot in the Elite Eight. Will it be the Hornets, or can the Red Wolves avenge their regular season loss to their rivals? We'll have that answer in a couple of hours. Before I go, I want to once again thank our presenting sponsor of CVC TV, Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery, and also I want to give our shout-out to our scoreboard sponsor, Independence Business Supply. And now, I'm going to turn it over to our CBC TV crew, Kyle Cornell and Double A, Anthony Alford, to call the game. Welcome in, folks. Another week of high school football in the great state of Ohio. And it's right, it's playoff football. It's mid-November. It's getting cold outside, but it's getting warmer on the gridiron. Matchup tonight, and it's the regional semifinals here in Division 6, Region 21. Kirtland hosting Cuyahoga Heights, pair of CVC teams. Happy to bring it to you live tonight from Nordonia High School in beautiful Macedonia, Ohio. Kyle Cornell and AA Anthony Alford on the call for you this evening. AA, two teams that know each other very well in the Chagrin Valley Conference. Yeah, yes, they do. And, and Coach Laverde, Coach Al Martin, they both have known each other for years and going, going <laughs> way back. You know, so this is the matchup where both teams know what to expect. There probably will be no surprises tonight um, as far as play style and, and, and game planning. Um, but that may be a little bit of the X factor, particularly in the Cuyahoga Heights side, which we'll get to uh, momentarily. But we saw there in the pregame show, Francis Connors, you know, he's going to be that guy for Cuyahoga Heights that's going to be zeroed in, and they're going to they're gonna look for Connors to, you know, carry Cuyahoga Heights on his back to perhaps pull the upset here tonight. Let's break down these two teams. We'll look at Double A and how they got to this point. Of course, Cuyahoga Heights coming in with a ten and one record this season. Their one loss to, you guessed it. That's right, the Kirtland Hornets back in the middle part of the year, thirty-five to nothing, at Kirtland in that game. That was just two games removed. Kirtland was from that big loss against Perry that broke that long win streak in the regular season. As of course the Hornets now break the field here. Of course, they're the home team at least less of tonight uh, for this matchup. Uh, since then, both teams 
But in a big roll, one loss apiece. You talk about kind of the breakdown for Cuyahoga Heights. A lot has been made this season of Kirtland, their run, especially after that loss to Perry. But Cuyahoga Heights in their own right, four shutouts on defense this year. They bring it that side of the ball. You mentioned Francis Conner, just one of the names we're going to call tonight for Heights as well. The Red Wolves are talented from top to bottom. Oh, yes, they are. And they're going to need all that talent, you know, and, and just work ethic coming in to this game. You know, going all the way back to media days, we talked about this when we had Cuyahoga Heights against Independence mm. earlier in the year. They wanted to get to this point, and they wanted, and, and they talked about getting to the state championship game. And they know this is the hurdle that they have to overcome, you know, the Kirtland Hornets. They have got to do that in a round where the Kirtland Hornets, you know, in the regional semifinal round, this is their round. They have won 13 <laughs> straight in this round. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, they have to overcome the history. But, you know, they both teams down there in the field, you know, they're hyped up and ready to go. It's going to be a big, big matchup tonight. Those Hornets, yeah, just more the same this year after that loss to Perry. They went on a run, 42 points a game, only eight points a game allowed on defense. Just a solid team from top to bottom. Coach Tiger Laverde has got them playing fantastic football. Playoffs, both teams uh, with interesting games. Of course, we were on the call last weekend. Central Catholic gave Kirtland a bit of a scare in that fourth quarter, but they were able to hold on. The other side, Rittman, big matchup in week uh, one of the playoffs for Cuyahoga Heights. They've been able to respond since then. Kickoff underway, and we are, too, at the 21-yard line being returned here. Again, by Kirtland pushing through. Solid return. And for the Hornets, Bill Beers gets a lot of those carries. This time he gets the return, and we're underway. Ball's going to be placed just inside the 40-yard line. First down and 10 for the Hornets offense, led by Jake Laverty, the sophomore quarterback, having a fantastic year. Great game last week, 2 double We saw the pass game get more prevalent with Kirtland. He's opening up the game more for Coach Laverde, of course, his father there in that aspect. Talk about just building that program from the beginning since first grade all the way through. You can tell Jake's been able to adjust. Absolutely, and they know the system, and they're going to play ball control, and that's going to be very important, and that, that's their style. Beers in motion, going to be a handoff to Alfieri. He is brought down. Solid tackle on the inside. That's big number 73, Nick Novak, the nose card in on the stop. And Novak, he's going to be somebody who, one of the senior leaders, you know, on both sides of the ball, on the line, and that's a great job identifying, you know, the the where the ball was going to go, and immediately attacking and making the play. I'll tell you what, uh, Kyle Heights has not forgot about that loss at Kirtland, 35 to nothing. Only blemish on the year for the Red Wolves. The defense trying to step up second and long for Kirtland. Laverde going to pass to the outside, big catch and Gain of about four yards. You're going to see that name come across the line too a lot. Gino Blasini, big game last week receiving the ball, his first catch tonight. Yes, it was. Uh, he did good work there, but good containment on the outside between the corner, you know, and and and, and the strong safety. Eddie Barrett, number 10, kind of mm -hmm. closed in a little bit there on the outside. Not much of a gain there, Kyle. Not much. Here we go. Third down and long. This is what Kyle Heights wants. The defense trying to force third and longs. They take advantage. Pitch to the outside. Beers cutting back inside. He's got room to run. Beers up the middle. Powers through. Still on his feet in the first down. Will Beers puts his head down and gets the first down for Kirtland. Big third down conversion. They needed eight. They got a bunch more. And this is how they've been successful all year long. Doesn't matter if it's third and long. The offensive line can open it up, and they will run the football on third and long. Pitch back outside the Beers. He turns the corner again. This time, Powers through. Probably only should have got a yard, but he ends up getting about three to four because he's able to put his head down and turn those legs forward. And the the one thing that this defense is going to have to get over, you know, it's the mental attack. We talked about it last week against Canton Central Catholic. Curlin has a way of messing with you upstairs. And off beers again, cutting inside, still churning the legs and eventually going to get brought down. It's another gain of about four yards. Beers, we saw the big playability last week. He had over 100 yards rushing in the first quarter, double-A. Amazing, amazing. And again, it's the work from the offensive line, just up top. And they pick up, they know their responsibilities, and they move forward and dive and they attack. Another third down conversion attempt on the way. This one a little bit more manageable at third and about four to five yards. But they're inside the Red Wolves' 40-yard line. Kirtland driving on this opening possession. Pitch to the outside. Alfarini cuts back in. He's got room to run. Rocco Alfarini breaks inside. 10-5 and into the end zone. Touchdown, Kirtland. Just like that. 
The Hornets take an early 6-0 lead. Take a look here. You get the outside contain, but look there. Just getting the safeties kind of sucked in there a little bit, and that's all you need. That's all you need just to take <laughs> off and go. And two critical third down runs. The first one led to a first down. The second one was a touchdown. Seems like every time we call a Kirtland game, third down conversions are just not a problem at all. They seem to make the big ones, whether it's four yards, eight yards, 13, 25. Doesn't matter. <laughs> they're, they're good, they're, they're, that's how they work. And, uh, extra point going to be on the way, and it's going to be blocked. That could be big when we talk about close games. Cuyahoga Heights knocks that one down. Again, Lessig couldn't get the ball over the head of that defensive line, so the score is going to remain 6 to nothing. with 9.51 to go in this first quarter. Hey, it's a... Chance for talking about scoreboard to remind you tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Independence Business Supply, of course, an Ohio owned and operated company with full service facilities here in Cleveland, capable of shipping supplies anywhere in the U.S. That's right, IBS is a business products dealer providing you with a single source for office products, facility and break room supplies, printing, promotional products, and furniture. You can visit orderibs.com to learn more about their products and amazing customer service. I want to emphasize if I believe if that was Connors who got the blocked extra point. Yeah. Two weeks ago, he did the same thing against Rittman <laughs> in, the, in the first round. Had a blocked extra point, scored twice out of two-point conversions. So they know how to get right through the line on those extra points. Those are not gimmies against Francis Connors and his Cuyahoga Heights special teams. Yeah, Rocco Alfieri with a fantastic 38-yard touchdown run to put Kirtland up 6 nothing. Connors with that block on the extra point. Keeping this a 6 nothing game is the Red Wolves looking to respond. Forced two third downs, but again, Kirtland just has money when it comes to third down conversion so far this year. And the point side of things, too. Both these defenses a little underrated, but the offenses have been able to turn it up to another gear double A the past couple of weeks and even the past few months of the regular season. See the smoke in the air after all the... <laughs> I thought it was one of those cannons <laughs> oh, from the Independence my crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ball kicked off and... Going to be returned from the own five-yard line. Here comes Cuyahoga Heights. Turning the corner, room to run. Going to get spun down just past the 25-yard line. Number seven there, Anthony Kotoris, who, uh, Kutusis, rather, who gets a decent return and to be a decent starting field position for this offense. And Fletcher Sturgill, the senior quarterback, who leads the group out. It's going to be important here at Cuyahoga Heights. You know, Coach Al Martin, who's been here a long time, long time, Cuyahoga Heights with football and girls basketball uh, head coach as well. And let's see how they respond. And another team that just is going to run the football <laughs> right you know, right down the field. If I believe that is. And up his counters on the inside. He's going to get spun down after a gain of maybe two to three yards. Francis Connors, of course, the senior. Six foot, 185 pound Fullback, halfback, tailback, whatever you want to call him. Tight end. He does a little bit of everything. You can do whatever you want here. And if you appreciate ground and pound football, this is Connors, Francis Connors, last week, 37 carries. Last week, two weeks ago, 39 carries. He's going to run the football, but I'm interested to see if there's going to be any surprises, and we might see something here. And Sturgill under center, second down. Connors again get the carry. Very much in between the tackles kind of guy. And. The defense able just to swarm and Beers was in there as well as a few other defenders to make the stop. Going to be third down and about four to five yards on the way. And again, disciplined football. That's what you're looking for here. Kind of what we talked about with Kirtland when they were on offense. Third down runs are not safe. Kind of the same <laughs> deal here. And again, do not be surprised on a third down, third and five. Another run is coming. Well, again, it uh, looks like... Uh, Sturgill in the shotgun there. Got three wide trips to the right. Beer showing pressure. So is Alfieri. Looking. Sturgill throwing. There's no one there. Intended receiver on the play uh, was number five. And of course, uh, it was Connors who was out there, but just a little bit too far to the reach. Going to force fourth down. And a ton of traffic, too. I actually do not mind the throw itself. You know, if you get that much traffic, get it away from the defenders. Mm. You know? Live to fight another drive. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing, too. You do not want to turn the football over, obviously, ever. But especially against Curlin, you know, you want to play that ball control. If you don't, if it's not successful, you know, live to fight another down. And Jack Lessig set to return the uh, punt here from Kyle Heights. Good job by the Curlin defense to force three now. 
McCurley will be showing some pressure on this. What a kick by Sturgill. High arc and going to be caught at the 29-yard line. Lessig going to take it. He's going to break through one tackle, cut through another. Still on his feet, spun down at about the 40-yard line. A tackle there by number 12, Nick Armbrust, who made the play. And that's where the Hornets will take back over. Good starting field position on the second drive of the first quarter for the Hornets offense. I'll tell you what, it's always, and we caught it in warm-ups here, Kyle. It's always incredible just the, you know, the punters and colder weather. You know, able to just boot the football, you know, it's just it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, through the smoke, apparently there's another wildfire in Canada. We had no idea, so <laughs> hopefully everyone's up there is doing okay, but it's <laughs> coming down with that. But here we go, first and 10 of the 40. Kirtland again, solid field position. Going to be a handoff on the inside. We saw this a little bit last week, too. That's big number 39 on the inside, McGuire Boyd. He got some carries, and that looks like it's translating into this game, the senior. Yeah, absolutely, and he's one of those weapons Coach Laverde likes to use in the backfield. We will mention his name as well um, on the defensive side of the ball, but just, again, a rotation of guys, a rotation of different formations. You know, this is what they do. Yep, keep you on your toes. Second down and about seven or so yards to go. Laverde going to pitch the outside. Alfieri cuts left, still on his feet, past the 45, near the 40 of Heights. Solid run for a first down. Rocco Alfieri. So a similar play design from what we saw with the touchdown uh, from the last drive. This time, able to get the kick out to the outside and get the first down. Both Beers and Alfieri going to be in, featured a lot. But we can see different moving heads here and there with this rushing attack from Kirtland. Those are the two main people you watch out for, as well as Jake Laverde, the quarterback, who's been able to show some promise. Had two rushing touchdowns last week himself, so able to make some big plays. Enough on the inside. Rocco Alfieri again breaks through inside the 40, down at just about the 36-yard line, giving him about six more yards. I mean, what do you do when you have, like, pulling guards, you know, just just operating, just going? And, and when you pull like that, too, like, they pull very, very quickly, too. They they launch all out of their stance. And as a linebacker, it is almost impossible to defend that without giving up a few yards. Not to mention just the skill in general of the guys that are getting those handoffs. Is, again, it's going to be Laverde who keeps it himself on the fake. He's got some room. Cutting to the outside. Jake Laverde breaks through down to the 15-yard line. 22 yards. Great job by Jake Laverde to inflate the hand off the beers on the inside. You have to respect it because of the talent of beers and Alfieri, too. And this time, Laverde keeps it himself and moves the chains. Yeah, good kickout block, too, by big man number 71. Rocco Alfieri again on the carry, breaking a tackle. He's got room, space, turns in, and scores. Another one for Alfieri. And the lead now swells to 12 to nothing. Kirtland on top of Cuyahoga Heights. I'll tell you what, take a look at this replay here and just watch just again the linemen, they go and sell out and the running just it takes the rest of it. You're not going to get these guys down in initial contact, and that's really what's the specialty of Curlin all year long. Barisic again going to try and line this one up. He had his first PAT attempt blocked earlier in this quarter. Snap good, hold down, kick on the way, and that one is good. So with that, the score now 13-0. Kirtland on top of Cuyahoga Heights here in semifinal action in the region, in Division Six, Region 21 here at ChagrinValleyConference.com. Hey, a double-A good chance to bring up the presenting sponsor for CVC TV, of course. It's the Ohio Center for Oral Facial Implant Surgery. Doctors Keith Schneider, Don Lewis, and Jill Weber. And uh, Don in the booth with us today. Appreciate him stopping by. There's well, Commissioner, how's it going? Yeah, nice to have him. Again, two CBC teams, right, of course. Hey, if you're wondering, their specialties include dental surgery and implants, corrective jaw and facial surgery, and trauma reconstruction. If for all of your oral surgery needs, go ahead and visit the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery website. That's www.ohsurgery.com. As always, thank you for your support of the Chagrin Valley Conference and CBC TV, too. I'll tell you what, the football that we have seen all year long in the Chagrin Valley Conference uh, has been incredible. It's been incredible just straight throughout just the town with all these kids. And, you know, and not only do we feature football, but we feature several other sports as well on CBC TV. It's had the soccer 
All-Star game earlier in the week. Yeah. So a lot, lot of good stuff. Yeah, basketball coming up too, of course, uh, this winter. Excited to be in the call for that for you guys as well. And it's Kurt when again going to bunt this one off again. Barisic with the kickoff, and here we go. Ball at the 14-yard line brought down after not a nine-yard return. So offense and Fletcher Sturgill for Cuyahoga Heights will come back up to 25. A quick score update. Hey, there's one more CVC team playing as well. Uh, Perry right now on top of uh, Garrettsfield Garfield, seven to nothing in the first quarter of that matchup over at Maple Heights High yeah, School. Yeah, over, sounds familiar, Double A. Yeah, that sounds very <laughs> familiar. Um, over there, at my old stomping grounds over there at Maple Heights. Yeah, how about that? Uh, <laughs> but great facility here too. Oh, a fantastic yeah. field and, and a great ho great hosts here too, of course. And Adorno Knights uh, being one of the uh, and spots and locations where we can have these games. Uh, first down handoff. On the inside, and in a small gain there for Connors. Had a lot of events here. Well, when I was here competing, it was a different stadium. Um, <laughs> so they they've done a lot of work here, kind of rebuilding um, all you know this football stadium and everything around here. It is really nice, and this has been the home in the playoffs when Kirtland leaves the their home confines. You know they've made their home here <laughs> during the playoffs. We were here last year. Um, for CVC TV for Kirtland during the playoffs. And now again, a familiar spot up big here in the first quarter. Connors on the inside and just nothing going on. Sturgill had problems with the handoff too. And maybe he saved that for a yard or two double A, but it's been tough sledding so far for the site's offense. Yeah, the timing obviously just didn't work out. But here's the crazy thing. You know, in a weird way, first and second down to this point has been very similar for both teams. Hmm. You know, good three, four yard gains. You get a third and five, third and six, third and four. It's been similar. The difference has been how Kirtland's executed on third down, and we're going to see how Cuyahoga Heights executes on their third down. Big early third down conversion attempt. Connor's going to get the handoff on the left side, and again, just not much there. Maybe another yard or two. Pushing the ball just inside the 35. Going to bring him a fourth and short, and decision time for Coach Martin. Very, very critical decision uh, here coming up. And it would not surprise me. And, yeah, I think they're – we'll see if they decide to go for it. There are personnel changes, mm. but we're going to see. And you wouldn't blame Coach Martin and the coaching staff if they decided to go for it, knowing you want to play ball control and, you know, you don't want to fall too far behind on the scoreboard. Beauty of having your quarterback is your punter, too. You never know what could happen. Sturgill is out there in a normal shotgun stance, and he has five wide. and. That's going to be a timeout taken by Coach Laverde in Kirtland. Maybe not expecting a uh, conversion attempt on that point. So Yes, yeah, enough it, yeah, it's enough to force a timeout. And first half timeouts, you're not really overly concerned about the clock as much as you are in the second half. But, yes, yeah, something that Coach Laverde didn't like there and wanted to call the timeout. Well, especially up 13 nothing too. You have a little more leeway when it comes to being able to call that. And Again, uh, the winner of this game will face the winner of another regional semifinal in uh, Division 6, Region 21, that of course being uh, Mineral Ridge and Mogador here in a uh, matchup. Right now currently tied 0-0. So that's the three and the ten seeds in this uh, little side of the bracket. But you know what, though, Kyle? I think that was a good time out there by Coach because you think about, you know, you have an opportunity here. Like you want against, against the Red Wolves, you want to kind of establish the scoreboard a little bit here early. And you understand that if they get a first down, the momentum will start to carry over to Cuyahoga Heights, and it'll start going because, again, like we talked about before, first and second downs have been identical. If they prove here, Cuyahoga Heights, that they can execute a fourth down, that's going to change the way this game's going to go. And it is a big fourth down here. Sturgill again in the shotgun. He's got three bunched wide to the left, two wide right, throwing, quick pass, and it's knocked down and incomplete. Great job on the inside. That was number three, Tyler Turk, who knocked the ball down. And that's a turnover on downs. Kirtland going to have fantastic field position with a chance to go up by three scores early in this game. That was an excellent drive there, like you mentioned, by Turk. And getting congratulations from the coaching staff. And that's what you want to do there up top. You know the ball needs to come out quick. So you jump up, get your arms up in the air, and get the football down. That's exactly what happened. Excellent coaching there and excellent execution by the Hornets. And now the offense retaking the field in solid field position on the 34-yard line. 
of Cuyahoga Heights. And the slant was there, too. Like, it was there. <laughs> Just a great great play by Turk to get his hand up and knock that ball down. Flag comes in there late, and I believe they're going to say Curlin called another timeout. Not liking the uh, the view there. I believe that is their second of the half. They have one remaining uh, with 4.33 to go in just the first quarter. So we're going to play the whole second quarter, too, with only one timeout. You mentioned double A, though. Honestly, first half timeouts. Yeah, first half time not Yeah, first half timeouts. I'm not overly concerned. But if you just want to make sure, you know, your kids get things right, there might be a clock adjustment here uh, shortly. But, mm. uh, but you want to make sure things are right. Uh, you kind of saw there, like, guys were – might be running around a little bit too, so you know, a lot happening here with uh, 44 minutes. I'm kidding. They're adjusting the clock. <laughs> 44 <laughs> minutes to go in this first quarter, folks. Buckle in. We're going to be here all Ooh, night. Oh man! <laughs> I guess this. I guess uh, we are calling the soccer. Uh, <laughs> How about that. <laughs> After all, that was cool though to watch though, and uh, uh, Steve Hare did a phenomenal job with that, and you know, heard all the coaches and you know players during those broadcasts. It, it was phenomenal. You're going to be a handoff on the inside. Beer is going to keep chugging forward for a gain of about four yards. And again, on the initial first down, Red Wolves doing a good job of identifying, but it's those pulling guards again. And it's a quick uh, back to the line. Beer's another carry. Spins through back inside the 25 down to the 23 yard line. That should be enough for a first down. So, what's happening to this point? Anytime you get those outside pitches and the one led uh, to a touchdown, the, the first one, what's happening is even with the outside containment, you always get that cut back inside and the linebacks are getting sucked in. Yeah, Laverde just kept it on a sneak. He saw a hole and just hit it right away. He got down to the 15-yard line. That's a gain of eight on a QB sneak. Yeah, and that's what's <laughs> happening again. Defensively, you are sub ideally defensively, you want to move forward, right? And But right now, they're forcing Cuyahoga Heights to react. And it's becoming an issue. Yeah, on the left side, here comes Alfieri. Breaks through and gets in for another touchdown. Unbelievable. Rocco Alfieri with his third rushing touchdown of the first quarter. Well, unbelievable for him and phenomenal by the lineman. Picking up the assignments, picking up the linebackers, and they're driving. They have, looks like they have track speed out there the, oh from the, the offensive linemen. Like they're picking up the necessary <laughs> blocks they need to. It's incredible. It's it's nice to have when all your offensive linemen can run a four five forty. Apparently, it's fantastic. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, they don't mess around. With the and again, that extra point is up, and it is good. That means twenty nothing is the score as Beresik's kick goes through the uprights. Kirtland is jumping all over Cuyahoga Heights to begin this game, double-A. Yeah, and it's just all fundamentals to this point. And Kirtland, and, and we talked about the timeouts that was taken. Again, first half timeouts, it's okay to burn them. <laughs> Want to make sure things are right. They did with the fourth down stop. And you saw that with Turk was set up the short field, called another timeout, and it's just gap responsibilities. And Kyle, we kind of, we're seeing this to this point where the defenders in the two of the three games uh, that we've had Kirtland, the defenders are having a bit of a tough time really attacking immediately hmm. because they have to they're, – they're doing their best to read the guards and they're thinking about what needs to happen. And by the time you think about it, instead of attacking, you got a lineman right on your grill and you're opening up a gap. Crazy to think about again, Kirtland. Uh, back to that week five, I believe it was, matchup with Cuyahoga Heights. 35 nothing was the score. Again, obviously still playing and seeing red, no pun intended. Uh, Kirtland was in that yeah. game after that loss to Perry and just where they are at. And where Heights has been able to respond to since that loss and really show their dominance. I mean, again, Kirtland just has the number right now of the Red Wolves. Is kickoff is back and going to be taken inside the 10-yard line. Here comes Cuyahoga Heights. Big hit on the inside by Kirtland. 17 there on the hit. That was Noah Runyon, the junior, 6'1", 190, but playing like he was 245 on that tackle like a linebacker. We saw him last week. He made plays <laughs> last week against Central Ca Kansas Central Catholic. 
uh, special teams and uh, defensively. So impressive. Uh, this All three facets of the game, really, for in Kirtland, offense, defense, and special teams, all in sync ever since that loss to Perry. They've been able to do so many things so well, and the Red Wolves now just trying to respond on offense and get a drive together. First down looking to pass out to the outside. It is caught, breaking through the 30 and pushed out of bounds. Again, at uh, the 37-yard line, Bassini on the tackle. That was number seven again. Again, uh, Anthony Cotis with the uh, and catch and run for a first down. And I believe, I could be wrong, I believe is their, their first, first down or second first down of this game. But there's stuff there in the passing game. You just got to open it up and get to it. And even on the even on the stop in the previous drive, we mentioned before, like the slant play was there. Just got to be able to try and find it as Connors gets to carry up the middle. And, again, just not a lot of holes in the inside. You try and wear down the defensive line of Curlin early in the game, but they've just been stout to this point. And maybe a gain of one, maybe two. Well, again, just they're fast. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, just, they're fast. And... Cuyahoga Heights, they're not facing a Kirtland-type team most of the year where, you know, this type of offense, you, you this is a you know, rare down, you know, rare down to defense. Just the physicality up top and the speed. That's what's happening so far with Connors. They're surrounding him. And a second and eight. Sergio looking to throw. He's throwing the ball way out there. There was contact. That's going to be pass interference. Couple of flags thrown in. And a big penalty against the Hornets. That ball was released. Sergio... Almost kind of recognized. Again, they were just trying to make contact 15 yards down the field. That's a big penalty against this Kirtland defense. I'll tell you what, some of these referees are good quarterbacks themselves. He threw that flag a good 15 to 20 <laughs> oh, yards man. into the wind. <laughs> Somebody signed him up. Man, that was that was, that was was a good throw. Guardians <laughs> looking for a relief pitcher? Oh, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> so that ball is going to get moved all the way down. And this is going to be by far the best field position that Rebels have had so far in this first half. Kirtland 47 yard line is where that ball is going to get placed. Great recognition from Fletcher Sturgill to throw that ball up and again just. But this is where again you have the the experience with Coach Martin, Coach Al Martin, Cuyahoga Heights kind of leading this team and you know full of seniors, you know, been there and they know they have to overcome adversity. And off inside Connor, another flag coming in. Usually in the air of holding or a false start. We'll see what's get called here. And it is going to be a false start, so we'll move it back five yards. Now if you got in again, not much there on the run either, but it doesn't matter. The ball going to get moved back five, and we'll just take another shot at first down here. First and 15 now on the other side of the 50, so back on their own side of the field of the Red Wolves. And again, big penalty, taking advantage of that, but then giving a little bit back to Kirtland. Right, and but obviously now what will happen with the, with the holding penalty earlier, now the DBs for Kirtland, you know, they're, they're alert now. You know, they're alert. You got, you got Beers back there. You know, he now and others, they know kind of what's going on. It's another flag. This will be another, they're going to say this time, yeah. Delay of game, yeah. So let's move it back five more yards. So all those yards on the penalty starting to come back. Yeah, the initial penalty against Curlin was 15 yards. And they give a 10 back on yeah. two straight penalties with the uh, the false start and then now the delay of game. Trying to get the play call in. Sturgill sprints into the huddle. Play uh, The play clock at about seven here. Sturgill under center. Connors inside and and very much a between the tackles kind of runner. Don't see him spread too much out there unless he's trying to catch a pass. And again, just a few yards. Yeah, at this point, you just wanted to get a play. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> positive yards Just forward. get positive yards, you yeah. know, and, and, and start fresh uh, there. But, you know, these are things, you know, in the playoffs, every little mistake, every little thing, you know, it, it catches up to you. Just seven carries for 18 yards in this first quarter for Connor. Sturgill looking to throw again. Quick out pass. It's caught by Kutis, who gets near the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to be third down and long on the way. And a good sharp throw. Good good way to identify, identify the receiver and get a manageable, what, third and 11 here. 
at that point where they were, yeah, it's pretty manageable because it was yeah, and, and first you, and 20. Yeah, at so. first, it was first and 20, and then you run with Connors. You get three, but, you know, when three yards leads to second and 17, you don't think you may have much success <laughs> with the rest of the drive. And you got to imagine four down territory here as Kutis is in motion. Sturgill looking to pass. Going to roll to his right. He's under pressure, throwing off his back foot. It's intercepted. It is intercepted. Rocco Alfieri was there. How about three touchdowns on the offensive side and interception on defense? He got that in bounds. I really thought, I really thought that was thrown out. That just didn't get that ball just didn't get out there enough. Maybe it looked like Sturgill maybe lost his grip for a second there, and Kurtland took advantage. Alfieri's big game, big first quarter continues. And forced a turnover on defense. Heard his name called a few times on a tackle sheet and I'm stunned. Wow. I, I legitimately thought that, you know, just a routine roll out, didn't like what you saw there, throw it out of bounds, and the ball flat out did not make the sidelines. And now he's uh, lining up in the slot. Trips close to your scheme on the left. Six seconds on the play clock. Pitch to the outside is Beers. He cuts back inside, and Beers this time gets swallowed up. One of the few times you're going to hear that in any Kirtland broadcast. He it's maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe they actually lost the yard of the play. Yeah, and that was adjustment there just with the outside pitch. And I'm intrigued, too. Will these defenders, they're going to just start, you know, going after the offensive players, not thinking too much, and just reacting and just going. And Laverde getting the call in from the sideline. Letting that clock roll down. Again, believe it's close, but they should be able to let the quarter run out. There's about a one-second difference, maybe half a second difference. Yeah, I think they can run this off. And I believe they will, just to make sure they're going to hang out there, but it will. That's going to be end of the first quarter. The score after one, 20 to nothing. The Kirtland Hornets on top of the Cuyahoga Heights Red Wolves here on CBC TV. It's special playoff coverage. Regional semifinal, Division Six, Region 21. And Kirtland all over Cuyahoga Heights early on in this ballgame, double-A. Well, you know what's crazy, though? Like, you know, Cuyahoga Heights, they're showing signs. Like, the last drive, then again, there lays the problem. You get the penalty, right? Hmm. And then <laughs> delay a game, false start, go back. You know, now it's first and 20, and you get the pressure. You think, oh, he's just going to throw it out. But that's the thing, though. When you're facing Kirtland, it's all about ball control, limiting turnovers, and that did not happen. And Kerlin right now, they're playing that ball control football. Mm. And their blockers, I, I'm just amazed at how fast their lineman really is. Like, I'm just amazed at how they get off their blocks and can just easily drive right down the field. Super impressive. We'll have a score update here in a few moments for you guys. From the other CBC team that's in action tonight, of course, Perry playing Garrett's Field at Garfield, the G-Men. We'll have an update for you shortly. Is it second down and long? Pitch to the outside. That ball is bobbled and a big stop by Kyle Heights. Connors was in there as well as number four. That's Derek Desanza who got in on the stop. Looks like it was going to be some trickery there. Maybe a pass backward, a pass forward thing and a bobbled catch out there on the outside forced to just, hey, get the ball and go down. We had, I think the amount of times I, we've seen that play try to be executed <laughs> and, and for some reason something goes wrong. Uh, we actually had a Perry game earlier this season. Uh, the other team tried to execute that exact same play. Fumble. Perry went back over. Jaden Studio scored off of like a pitch. Mm. And same deal. Laverde going to throw over the top. And there may have been some holding in there. But it uh, looks like I don't see any yellow flags. Was looking for sale on the inside on a beautiful route. Laverde put a great ball out there. But... No call. Great job by Cuyahoga Heights to force a fourth and long, and the punt unit trots out on the field for Kirtland for the first time tonight. I'll tell you what. I will say as a defender that might – I thought that was a clean call um, as a defender. Um, <laughs> as but, a defender. Yeah, yeah. you know, look, look. <laughs> Rules for on defense are tough these days. <laughs> They're tough. I mean, look, NFL scoring is down. You can watch those rules change. Uh, low snap. That ball is going to get blocked. It's going to be picked up. And fall down at the inside the 10. What a job by Cuyahoga Heights. 
And that was DeSanza again who got on the inside. Connor's in there too, got the ball back from him. There was a low snap on the punt, never able to kick it away. And Heights has a chance. This is their best opportunity so far to get points on the board. So for everyone watching who played football in the past, and you know, I remember when I played, I'm like, why are we spending this much time on special teams in practice? Mm. Like, why are we spending this much time on punting? It's like, you just gotta kick the ball and that's it. Well, that's why, you know, all those little things, you know, have to, it all plays in. And again, you flip the field and we got a whole, whole new ball game right now, Kyle. Looks like uh, Connors is gonna take the snap, direct snap to him and keep it himself. He gets lifted and dropped after a gain of a few more yards. It is first and goal. Three yard carry for Connors. He's got eight for 21 unofficially so far tonight. Tough sledding for Francis Connors, at least rushing the football. But again, Heights with a great opportunity here now with just five yards to try and get their first six points of the night. Wonder here if we might see, we haven't seen it all day, um, see how they come out here formation-wise. At some point, a fake pitch to the outside. And Connors again taking that direct snap. He's actually gonna hand inside to Barrett. Barrett cuts to the outside, he's got room. Barrett cuts back in, great speed by the Kirtland defense to make that stop. Will Beers got to the outside. Oh, and Alfieri was there too. What a play by that defense. Man, the speed is there. Barrett, Eddie Barrett, had. It, it, I know it would have been a tough angle, but you got to just You cannot hesitate against this defense. You cannot. They are too fast, and it, you just can't do it. You just, just go right around that corner. Get get the yards. Get the yards there. You just got to decide and go. You're exactly right, Double A, because, again, when the defense makes up their mind, it's hard to outrun them. Here we go, third down and goal. Sturgill in that shotgun by himself. Looking to throw outside, has a man, it's jump ball, it's up and it is! Caught for a touchdown! Caught for a touchdown! Nick Armbrust with the amazing catch. Five yards for the score. And Kyle Heights on the board for the first time tonight. Good identification there and just the one on one matchup. The ball got up there high and Armbrust is able to get to the, to, to the highest point of the football and make the play. Fantastic touchdown catch. Sides will line up and the moment you thought maybe there was going to be a two-point conversion, but they'll converse back to a normal formation and we'll see an extra point attempt on the way. It's number 11 down there, by the way. Michael Pastor Q, that's what the Extra point, it's low, it's a line drive, and it's no good. Cannot sneak in the left side. The score remains 20 to six. Cuyahoga Heights takes advantage of the blocked punt and gets in for the first time tonight with 9.39 to go in this first half. Double A, what a sequence in four heights. Yeah, and I think uh, Beers actually, yeah, blocked that extra point. <laughs> so we have two blocked extra points to this. But you're right, Kyle, just uh, the so, so it was a standard punt, right? Standard punt, but just weren't able to get the handle. Cuyahoga Heights was able to flip the field, get on the scoreboard just like that. But you see how hard it is in the playoffs, every single yard. Like, it wasn't guaranteed, even though they got the ball, the Red Wolves, at like the six-yard line, it wasn't guaranteed that they were getting in the end zone. Mm. But they found a way to do it, and they're – on the scoreboard, and they're back in this football game. Double A talking about first time on the scoreboard. We should talk about tonight's scoreboard sponsor, of course, Independence Business Supply. They're an Ohio-owned and operated company with full-service facilities here in Cleveland, capable of shipping supplies anywhere across the U.S. Of course, IBS is a business products dealer, providing you with a single source for office products, facility and break room supplies, printing, promotional products, and furniture. You can visit orderibs.com to learn more about their products and amazing customer service. <coughs> I want to thank uh, Independence Business Supply for a fantastic season. Taking care of that scoreboard for us. And we're all going to be kicked and taken with Squib at the 26-yard line. Going able to get a good return. Breaking to the left side. Got some room to run. Down to the 40. And down inside the 20 to the 10. The 5 in for a touchdown. Unbelievable. The one guy you probably don't want to kick it to, Will Beers, takes it to the house. 
Oh my goodness. A shorter kick to try and avoid the return. It was taken at 26. Beers flips it 74 yards for a touchdown. So Curlin, uh, special teams redeems themselves. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just again, flipping, <laughs> flipping the field, flipping the scoreboard. And the, for the second time, special teams leads to a big score in this football game, in this playoff game. Unbelievable. Again, the special teams, double-A mentioned, able to get things right as Barisic lines up the extra point. Fantastic return by Beers. Line drive, extra point on the way, and it is no good. Wide to the right. So Barisic has missed his second one this night, and it's going to stay 26-6 to the score. Kirtland on top of the Red Wolves. We talked about the big game that Rocco Alfieri's had at this point. Six carries, 86 yards, and three rushing touchdowns. He has an interception on the defensive end. Little Beer says, hey, I want to join the party, too. Yeah, and how about the speed that he provides? Just he got the initial cuts <laughs> and just went right down the sideline and just took care of business. And, you know, this Kirtland, you know, this faithful here. And, 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 and you know, Kyle Guy scored – on a Kirtland defense, we talked about it last week. They went into Kirtland, went into last week's game, their first string defense only giving up six points. You know, since the since the Perry game, mm -hmm. you know, so they were kind of against the wall there. But again, our special teams flipping the field once again. Now, Cowhog Heights, how they're going to respond? Speaking of responding, uh, Perry started slow a little bit, but now in the second quarter, they're up twenty-eight to nothing. Over Garrett's Field, Garfield, the G-Men, Perry well on their way, looking to advance their own regional final. Top top ranked team in Division 5. What a year it's been for the Perry Pirates undefeated season. It continues in the playoffs. They've been dominant, as the same can be said for these Hornets. The Knights will take the ball from inside their own 10 at the 8. Return on the way, and again, just great speed. And I tell you what, Armbrust, who had a great... Touchdown catch, just had nowhere to go. Solid and job on the special teams for Kirtland. And the Red Wolves will take over just past their own 20-yard line. Well, you felt good. If your heights last time through, were able to get that ball into the end zone for the first time tonight. But, uh, again, obviously the special teams touchdown for the Hornets. Important for the Red Wolves to stay focused on task and offense and to keep trying to shrink that lead back down. Yeah, and this is where you're going to rely on your senior, senior leadership. You know, you want to... You know, this is where, hey, buckle down. Let's get a good drive going. And honestly, don't even be mindful of the scoreboard at this moment. Run your offense. Kind of open it up a little bit. Maybe a surprise here on first down. Mr. Urgil under center. Connors with the carry. And again, double A, yeah, just kind of more the same. Game of about three to four yards. And Connors in nine for 24 tonight. Couple plays on defense, but quiet night so far for Connors. Yeah, and, and what you're hoping for, and it will happen, but what you're hoping for is for the the Kirtland defensive line uh, get beat up a little bit, get worn down a little bit. You know, heavy usage of Connors, not to completely go away from it, but yeah, you're right, Kyle. You know, it's not re really leading much to yardage uh, to this point. See if Sturgill, the quarterback, he has an ace up his sleeve here. Going to hand to Connors in again on the inside. Great job by Alfieri. Rocco Alfieri came in and stopped. Connors was trying to fall forward for a bigger gain. Could have been maybe a first down if he didn't stop him up high. And it's going to force a third down. Yeah, and that's what – great play by him. And offensively, you know, this you're kind of looking for the silver lining in offensively. And now it's, you know, earlier in the game when it was third and six and third and five. Now it's only third and four. Um, ish, and kind of looking for that progress there. Trying to build the drive together on the offensive end. They score, but they started at the uh, the Kirtland 8 on the last drive, so they had a little bit of a benefit with that. Connors again on the outside. Great job by Kirtland's defense. That was number five out there. Will Sale that caught Connors for no gain. And it's fourth down, and again, decision time for Al Martin. You're back deep in your own territory. I imagine the punt team's coming out. And here lays the difference. The Curlin defense, particularly the linebackers, you know, the moment they see the guard move, like just move with its shoulders, mm -hmm. they're flying to the football. Mm -hmm. and they're not even thinking about, okay, what's next? You know, they're just flying right in. Well, spoke too soon. That's going to be Connors who's going to take the snap. 
Kind of doesn't know what to pass. Throwing it Sturgill. He catches. No, it's dropped incomplete, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. Connors threw a pass to the outside because he does everything else, so why not do that too? And <laughs> Sturgill just couldn't bring it in, and, and Kurtwin's offense is going to get fantastic starting field position on the Red Wolves' 27-yard line. That's how you pull a support. But you know what, though? That's one of those things you had the pressure there on the outside. It was a good fake. <laughs> good, good fake. You know, with Connors just not able to make the play on the outside. And well, you mentioned a different look for this Kirtland defense, trying to show him something different, and try and catch him off guard. You never know what that play. But and now the, of course, the downside <laughs> of taking that risk is what's happening here is Kirtland has the ball deep in your own territory. Hand off. Breaking through, oh my goodness, breaking to the outside. Beers cuts through, dives, touchdown! Will Beers missed the end zone so much he decided to go one more play and get back in. 27 yards for a touchdown, check out the run yeah, here. Yeah, he did, and again, just the blocking up front, the linebackers, and just a cut. You got the safeties turning around, and you know, when that happens, that means... That means the offense is in the end zone. I said Beers is having a quiet night besides that 74-yard uh, kickoff return for a touchdown. Six yeah, carries, yeah uh, pretty quiet. <laughs> yeah, seven carries, 62 yards and a touchdown. Actually below what he had at this time last week in the game. wonder what's wrong with him. No, <laughs> he the extra points up, but it's good. Yeah, we're going to have to examine uh, how, to, how to fix him <laughs> at halftime. <laughs> a score uh, going a bit more here. Extra point, obviously, good for Barisic. Uh, he had a couple of misses earlier in the game. 33-6 to six is the score. This is what Kirtland does to you, man. It's just, this it's is what they do, man. Relentless on it, the offensive end. Well, it, it, it's the combinate offense, defense. What do they do on special teams? Coach Laverde has no problem burning two timeouts in the first quarter. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's, just, it's a small thing. But it's those small things. It's a different type of operation as, you know, Curlin's trying to make that run back to the state final. And, you know, obviously, you know, they want to get back to, you know, winning it all uh, once again. And Coach Laverty talked about this uh, before the game uh, with me, Kyle. He's like, look, these playoffs are six weeks long. It becomes grueling. Mm -hmm. You know, it really does just because – Obviously, here at Division Six, you don't have the numbers that some of the bigger schools have as far as players. So keeping these kids mentally sharp through all these situations, you know, is very, very critical for a Kirtland team that's used to playing 15, now 16 games a year. It's a long schedule, but the Hornets sign up for it. They usually rise to the occasion. Ball taken from the 11, and again, just unbelievable defense by the Hornets, just nothing there on the return. Ball gonna be placed at the 21 yard line again. That's where the Red Wolves will take over. Quick score update to uh, the winner of this game playing the winner of Mogador and Mineral Ridge. Mogador on top, the Wildcats over the Rams, 13-7 in that second quarter. Mogador the three seed in the Division Six Region 21. Also, we mentioned earlier, Perry on top of Garfield, Garrettsville Garfield, that is 28 to nothing in the first half of their own game, so CVC showing up tonight in some big ways. So here we go. First down and 10 on their own 21-yard line. Churchill fake the pass, handing off, and again, just nothing there on the inside. Connor's still trying to turn the legs, but just could not get anything. Yeah, give credit for trying. I mean, with just keeping it up with the with the effort, but you know, you got it again, athletic defensive line um, with the Hornets and they're the lowest guys to the ground, you know, up front. Yeah. You know, you see a little bit of DeSanza as well. Maybe you see some Eddie Barrett, but it's been Connors religiously here in this first half. And again, just 12 carries for 29 yards. He hasn't been able to really find a hole uh, in the middle of that defensive Kirtland line there to try and move forward. Second and long. Sergio looking to pass. Throwing to the outside. That one is going to be caught. Breaking through and getting near a first down. That's Kutis who... Who got near the first down marker. He made it be just short double. It looks like he was by about a yard, maybe a half a yard. Yeah, and even though even though the first tackle wasn't completed, it was just enough of a wrap to get the second man to help out, the safety to help out, and prevent the first down. Third and short for the Red Wolves, trying to 
move the ball out of their own territory here and put a drive together. And Connor's going to take the drive snap. Cut inside. He's going to have that first down, but not much after. Needed only one, got about three. Yeah, but good progress there. Good lead block uh, there. And, you know, Bear was there too. So, did what you needed to do uh, to get the first down and, you know, keep all this going. The ball now at the 33-yard line. Red Bull was, like we said, trying to put a drive together. About a little over five minutes to go in this first half, and it's 33-6. to Gertwin's been able to show up in all facets of the game so far tonight. Special teams playing well, despite the, uh, the blunder with the punt. Offense doing their job, too. Sergio looking to throw to the outside. Incomplete. Looking for his intended receiver. Yeah, that was Nick Armbrust, who caught the touchdown. The lone score so far in the game for the Red Wolves. A little go route to the outside ball covered by Gertland. Yeah, and, and that's, I remember the, the score in the end zone. That was one on one. That was man to man mm -hmm. <laughs> in the end zone. That time, yeah, like you mentioned, two guys, two guys on them, and just not there. Kind of saw something a little similar earlier back in the first quarter. You know, if something's not there, throw it away, make sure the defenders are not close to it. I also want to try to make sure you give your uh, your teammate a chance, too, with those balls. As and Connor's going to get the carry and break through that initial line. For one of the first times tonight, he actually got a solid five- to six-yard game. That could be Connor's longest run so far this first half. And, and that's saying something, Kyle. That's a great point. You know, that, and that just emphasizes, you know, first off, maybe this is why the strategy of getting us employed because eventually, no matter how good you are, you know, Connor's will wear you down. Try tackling that guy 37 times tonight. Oh, Might man. be a little tough, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, United found out last week. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Sturgill in the shotgun. He's got two wide to the right, two wide left. Looking, looking. Sturgill going to take it himself and run to the left side. He's under pressure and brought down. He may have got a yard out of that. Fletcher Sturgill able to keep things moving at least forward, but now a fourth down on the way. wonder if they identified the screen and defensively and, you know, nothing was open and set up and, Sturgill had to take off. And good on him, too, because when you do screen, usually there's some pressure in your face. He got out of that, and it could have been possibly a loss of five, six, seven yards. He actually got a yard, uh, but it does force another fourth down here, and, and Coach Al Martin going to send his offense back on the field. Connors again going to take that snap. He's going to roll to his right. He gets bumped through. Great job by Kerwin's defense, and they swarm Connors. He's dropped for a big loss of about five. And a turnover on downs again. Kirtland's defense has been suffocating in this first half. And certainly the fans, the Kirtland fans who have the home side here today, uh, certainly appreciating the efforts of the defense on the fourth down. And, yeah, like you mentioned, just how many guys were there to make the play there? Oh, I lost <laughs> count at about a billion. Yeah, that yeah. was a ton. <laughs> oh, my goodness, just – Great job on the left side, too, reading it. Again, any chance that Connors had of an initial push through was bumped back because the Kirtland defensive line pushed the line back and won the line of scrimmage there, and he had no avenue to find its way through. So, again, Kirtland with, again, outstanding field position on the Red Bulls 35-yard line. A little bit of a reverse handoff action, cutting back inside. Getting a big run through and a touchdown. That's the other Alfieri, Danny Alfieri with the touchdown, number four tonight. What a touchdown run, 34 How about yards. Danny? How about him? <laughs> and just the, the speed, you know, from him. And, again, up front, I, you know, we've been saying this all game. We've been saying it all season. You say it runs in the family a little bit? Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe. And again, he's only a junior. This is going to be a weapon that Curlin's going to have next year. Oh, my goodness. So Rocco graduates, and Danny takes his place oh, right there. Yeah. If it were 11 next year, we'll find out. Extra point going to be lined up by Barisic. Should have movement up front. Yeah, that's going to move him back just a little bit. Extra point was good, but they're going to believe moving back five yards and give it the old college try again. In this case, the high school try, I guess. Not one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't, you know, you can't say the Canadian Football League try because the goalpost would be at the other end of the end zone instead. 
<laughs> We're going down a couple rabbit holes. We probably. Should. I actually <laughs> have no idea the rules of Canadian football. <laughs> one day I'll sit down and read those. One day. I tried one day. It was on ESPN. I could not figure it out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, luckily we're in America here, so that's yeah. Always thank good. you. Yeah. <laughs> As the extra point gets a little bit longer now, ball gonna be uh, placed at the 15 for the kick and the uh, stoppage of play here for a moment. Maybe a bit of a maybe a clock or something's going on there um, as well. Here the bands warming up too. Feature the bands coming up at halftime. Excited for that, always. Bands always bring it. Bands in the CBC, by the way. I just want to point this out. I've called high school football across the country. I can say that now because I was in North Dakota for a minute. Uh, fantastic. In the Inc Chagrin Valley Conference. Incredible. As this point, which looked more like a mid range field goal, was up. That one is good. That's right. The score now 40 to 6. Kirtland on top. Again, of Cuyahoga Heights here on CVC TV. Speaking of us, good chance to remind you about our sponsor. Again, for uh, CVC, -T of, uh, CVC TV, rather, of course, it's the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery. Doctors Keith Schneider, Don Lewis, and Jill Weber. EAA, what are their specialties? Ooh, a ton. Tell us. I'll tell you a little bit about those, of course. Dental surgery and implants, corrective jaw and facial surgery, and, hey, trauma reconstruction. You know, for all of your oral surgery needs, and believe me, I have a few, <laughs> go visit the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery website. That's www.ohsurgery.com. And as always, thank you for your support of the Chagrin Valley Conference and CVC TV. Double A, I, I have what they we'll call <laughs> a face for radio. <laughs> but we're streaming, so. Are, when are when you, the camera gets in here, we're all in trouble. Are, That's all are, I'm saying. Are you yes. saying we both will have a talk with Commissioner Lewis uh, at yeah, halftime? Yeah, there's going to be <laughs> maybe a consultation. I don't know yeah. if we can do something like that here. I don't know what it is, but we'll figure some things out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is going on? The good news is we can say we know a guy, which is kind of nice. No, nah, this is this is great. But you're seeing here, and and, and they are fantastic, of course. Uh, um, but the standard of excellence uh, with Kirtland, I think sometimes we take it for granted just how good they are and how good they've been mm. all this time. But it's just amazing to see it in action. Um for us the last couple of weeks, but, you know, appreciate this. Privilege to watch Kirtland football now three different times this year. Is that ball going to go through the hands, wind through to the end zone? That should be a touchback. The ball going to come back out for Cuyahoga Heights, who, again, minus the very, very, very short field on the special teams miscue on the punt by Kirtland earlier in this uh, second quarter. The offense really has not been able to get anything going against this Kirtland defense. No, no, not at all. And, you know, they got to find out right here, right now. You know, they got to dig down deep, dig down deep, get a good drive going, you know, and find a way. Because it seemed like it, it, it was weird because you mentioned that, that play with the, with the block punt, basically. And it seemed like they was right back in it, but. The kick returned immediately right after. It's like Kirtland just slammed the door almost immediately yeah. after they built a little bit of momentum. Is That's going to be a fumble. Ball still out, trickling through eventually, still on the ground. And I believe that was picked up, yep, by Kirtland. Wow. Joey Hokelneck got inside and made the stop and got the turnover. And again, just a tough going for this Red Wolf offense. It's just, gonna it's, the ball just, back. it's just rolling downhill right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, seemingly the way this is, you know, can't get to halftime fast enough. You know, right now if you're, you know, Kyle Heights, unfortunately. Second uh, turnover of this first half for the Red Wolves. And when Kirtland's playing the way they are, you can't give them the ball back. And, and, it's hap and this is all happening so quickly, too. Because mm -hmm. we were mentioning with the transition to score it. Not long ago, it was twenty. What twenty to six? Twenty. Going to be a handoff on the inside, pushing through for Kirtland on first and goal. That's big thirty-nine. You're going to see him get a few of those. McGuire Boyd, the senior. I'll tell you this much, though, Kyle. You want to know? You want to know how you know? Like we're deep into the playoffs now. 
We get here. It's six o'clock and it's pitch black. <laughs> remember, remember when we were in Beachwood week one? Oh the sun didn't set to like eight thirty. Yeah. <laughs> The game was practically over. Yeah. We're like, wow, it's still light <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> During the halftime, like, oh, man, that's a nice sunset. <laughs> Got here pitch black during the pregame. And then, of course, uh, Kurtwin turned the lights out, too. His boy cuts inside, and he'll get in. Four, six more. McGuire Boyd with the rushing touchdown. And that's going to balloon the score to 46-6. to six. Kurtwin on top of the Red Wolves. Here on CBC TV, ChagrinValleyConference.com. And, and Kirtland, just a literal buzzsaw from the word go tonight, Double A. And they do it quickly. You know, we talked about during the pregame, you know, Kirtland in this round, the regional semifinal round, they have won the last 13 games in this round. They're 14 and 1 in this round. Like, this is, you know, Coach Laverde knows how to figure things out. The rest six extra point is up, and it is good. So now 47. 2-6. You talk about these two teams, obviously CVC uh, members, both of them, uh, played earlier in the season. We did see Kirtland win that game 35 to nothing, but we saw the response from Cuyahoga Heights for the second half of the year and where they were able to really to bounce back. The defense came alive. The offense scored a bunch of points. They were able to rattle off now a 10-1 record this season. But man, Kirtland is another kind of animal when you get facing them out there. I bet you they want a repeat of that or a, a redo of that game against Perry. Uh, early in the year, too, the way they've been able to play so far. Well, honest, well, Curlin. Yeah. I, well, but here's the thing: that that game and that result, it, that's part of the story. Might be what they needed, honestly. Yeah, it's part of, of the story. Like I mean, that fire, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what you, you that was what fifty seven straight regular season games. That streak was ended in that game. LeBron was a Cavalier the last time they uh, they lost the game. Right, home. <laughs> right. But you look through their schedule. Curlin did not. They didn't give up a single point for like four or five straight weeks after that game. And that was the motivation they needed to really, you know, give like a different type of focus mm. into the standard that they have set um, as a program. Team, we always talk about wins and losses with Kirtland. Usually there's a goose egg next to that loss name for most of the year. That ball dropped again, taken by Heights and. And pushing through, solid way to get back a few yards there was number 12, Nick Armbrust. But again, Kirtland's special teams swarming. That ball down at the 15-yard line. But you mentioned a double A. Yeah, normally you see a zero next to that loss uh, total for Kirtland. For the majority of the year, talk about playoffs, maybe that's when you talk about a team maybe that could come along and find a way to maybe exploit a few weaknesses here or there. But it happened early. Week mm -hmm. three yeah. of the season. We, of course, were there for that matchup. And, Perry is what they are, of course, in Division 5, a fantastic team that is currently up big two on Carrotsfield Garfield, 28 to nothing in the first half of that game. But you mentioned it, Kirtland, the fire has been lit at that point, and they've looked like a completely different team I since mean, that night. But, but imagine if it, if it goes this way, two of those teams might be in Canton coming up in a few weeks. Crazy to think about this. Barrett gets the pitch to the outside. He just gets stopped. Host of tacklers on the outside. Jack Noop was also out there. To make the stop, Noop, a freshman. Seeing some younger guys make some plays. You know, to be perfectly honest, you know, right now you kind of feel for Cuyahoga Heights at this moment. You know, just you know the way the score flipped and how quickly this has happened. And, you know, it's clear right now, you know, they're in their own heads at the moment. Mm -hmm. And... You know, and it's just tough. It's, you know, it's just tough right now. You know, they just got to find a way to dig out of it here. Yeah, second and long. Sturgill going to keep it himself, go to the outside. He's going to get brought down, and he maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Don't they're going to say he lost the yard. I mean, there is just literally nothing in the run game right now. No holes. This current one defense has played almost a perfect game when you talk about the rush defense. For a team in Cuyahoga Heights, we know they still, they, listen, they put up 28, 29 points a game. This mm -hmm. team does score the football fairly well, but Kirtland, and again, we just talked about it, just a different kind of beast tonight. Yeah, and again, only giving up six points off the short field for the punt. So, they again, eight yards. they, yeah, they essentially, was... Kyle, have not given up a long, sustained drive all game long. Definitely not. As the clock continues to roll down, hand off on the inside again, and 
And again, more of the same, only a couple yards there for Connors. His 16th carry of the night. We're talking 16 carries for someone and a half. Usually we're talking about a pretty big game, but Connors has only been able to muster about 36 total yards rushing. Honestly, that's the, that's the play you run just to get to halftime. Yeah, I mean, just to get it, I do believe looking at the play clock. They are synced up pretty They even. may have to snap the ball. Um, right with like two seconds to go. They may have to snap it before they go to halftime. But, you know, just get these guys in the locker room. And it, this game may not turn out the way that you want it to if you're Cuyahoga Heights. But just buckle down. Remember what you've done all year long. And maybe in the second half, you know, Get a good drive going, put some points back on the board. Yep, and that's the score to halftime, 47 to six. Kirtland on top of Cuyahoga Heights here on CBC TV. With that, we'll take a halftime break. When we come back, we'll have a recap of your first half, give you some score updates around the area, and we'll have second half action here from Nordonia High School. Again, 47-6 the score. Hornets on top of the Red Bulls here on CBC TV.
Back in halftime here at Nordonia High School, the score 47 to 6 in this regional semifinal matchup in Division 6, Region 21. Kyle Cornell, double A, Anthony Alfred on the call for you tonight. All CBC in the regional semis. And speaking of all, it's been all Kirtland at this point, double A. That's right, 47 to 6. That is right. No typo on your screen. Uh, two teams that know each other pretty well, but double A, man, it was a tough first half for Heights. Kirtland just doing more of the same they've done really the second half of this entire season. Yeah, absolutely. And this is just, again, what they've been able to do, just flip the scoreboard over. Uh, we mentioned before they had a, you know, it was a what a block punt, um, but early in the second quarter, and Calgary Heights was able to score, made it twenty to six, mm -hmm. and then immediately right after, uh, what well, Beers went right down the field, had the kick return, and since that point, Kirtland has just sprinted um, away here in the second quarter. And it happens that quickly, it happens that fast. So um, it, it was clear that. The Red Wolves, Cuyahoga Heights, in a blink of an eye, got a little rattled. So curious what the halftime adjustment is going to be, just from a motivational standpoint. You know, just get a good drive going and get back in the scoreboard. It's going to be a tough task. Kirtland in that first half, I mean, there's a laundry list of guys that made big plays. Talk about Rocco Alfieri <laughs> in the first half, too. 86 yards on the ground, had three rushing touchdowns. He also had a big interception on the defensive side of the ball. We've called his name about a billion times for tackles, too. He's had a fantastic night. Will Beers said, you know what, uh, it's been kind of quiet for me running the ball. I'm going to return a kickoff 74 yards for a touchdown. Then he also decided to run one in as well for a oh, score, yeah. too. <laughs> Beers has 62 yards on the ground and a rushing touchdown, as well as that return touchdown, too. Uh, relatively a quiet night for Jake Laverde as well. Only two passing attempts, one of two for four yards. Had that completion of Blasini earlier on in that first quarter, but he hasn't really had it to throw the ball and needed to uh, because of the all-around effort running, obviously return game, defense too, putting them in great field position. I mean, Kirtland's just been able to really play from ahead and, and play from ahead of the 50 too. They've had the ball consistently deep inside Kyle Heights territory, and they've made a pay almost every single time. Yeah, and that's been a story, you know, of Kirtland. That's been, I'll just, I'll just be honest, that's been a story of, you know, of most of our games this season, you know, with the – with the field position battle and a lot of the teams that have been that have been up, you know, you know, on our, on our schedule has been primarily because, you know, they're they're starting their possessions on the other side of the fifty. <laughs> it's just it's just been that way, you know, all year long, and you know with Curlin, that's that's been the case here. Now it's going to be curious though. Remember. And Coach Laverde talked about it. You know, he had his younger guys in um, in the fourth quarter. And Kansas Central Catholic had a couple scores. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh-uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. nah, nah. Yeah, get, get, the, get the starters back in. Good to see you still do that after uh, last yeah. weekend. Yeah. See, it still has some weight. Yeah, get, get the starters <laughs> back in. You know, good to go. But I'm curious here. Whoa, whoa. We got a new kicker. Oh, uh, whoa, the ball whoa, again. whoa, whoa, whoa. That's big number 52 in there. Oh. Dom Deblajack with the kick. That's a good kick. It. That was not bad. 25-yard line returned. I believe the ball may have came out. And they're going to say, I believe that's going to be Kirtland football. You're kidding. It is. And it is. Wow. Oh, my the goodness. The Hornets are going to have it. Oh, my goodness. Connors had the ball stripped out. 17 was in on the play. That's Noah Runyon. We've seen him make some big plays. Knocks the ball free. and So it's not going to be Heights football to start the third quarter. It's going to be Kirtland football off the third turnover of the game from Cuyahoga Heights. Couple, uh, again, special teams. Special teams has been key in this football game to this point. You let the big man kick the football. Now he has to block. Mm. <laughs> he has to go out there and left guard and, and, and block. Uh, but you let the big man kick. Forced a fumble. You're going to be a quick pitch to the outside. Some new names going to be making their rounds here. That's number 26. Uh, Carter Luzar, a freshman who gets his first carry, loses a couple yards. And, and I know we was joking around, you know, a little bit, you know, a couple minutes ago. But these young guys, they have something to prove because, you know, because of the scoring from last week when they came in, they want to prove, hey, we could be trusted in a playoff game. And even on a, even on the long front, I can be trusted in a big game. Loser breaking to the right. Talk about being trusted. Another big gain inside the 25 down to 
about the 22, 23 yard line. Those are able to get about nine, 10 yards on that carry. And something even I'm seeing even better now compared to last week with the younger guys, you know, encouragement. You know, they, you know, giving each other, you know, the bat in the helmet, high five, communicating with each other. And even these first couple of plays, a marked improvement, even on the communication front compared to what we saw in the fourth quarter last week. Yeah, Max Paul in the game two, new quarterback for Kirtland and for Jake Laverde. Luzar with the carry up the middle, trying to push through. Did he have enough for the first? He may be just short. We'll see where they spot it. Yep, he's going to be short by about a yard. So fourth down on the way. For Curlin, I imagine, again, just going to go for this here as the clock continues to roll. 47-6 to six to score. Again, some of the backups in for the Hornets here in this third quarter. Again, for those new, uh, just tuning in for the first time, a 30-point difference, you get a running clock in the second half where the clock only stops on the change of possession. Who's are going to get that pitch? Going to turn his way through, get down to about the 20, and that should be enough, I believe, for a Kirtland first down. And, yeah, they're going to move the chains right there. Again, just what we see before, just, you know, already knows it, better communication, you know, with the young guys. You know, Coach Laverde, you know, working with them, like get the right play call in. And see the linemen, they're moving with more confidence as well. Well, think about it, too. How many times do you see freshmen get playoff experience this deep in playoffs, too? I'm trying to take a positive even – in a game where it's kind of like this, you kind of tell them, hey, it's 0-0 for you guys out there. Earn some plays, uh, make some plays, and show us why you're going to be a big part of this program beyond, obviously, just this season. A fake pitch turning inside. Great tackle there. It was Nate Chucko on the uh, trickery there. Good stop by Derek DeSanza on the inside of the senior for Cuyahoga Heights. Yeah, DeSanza's had a great season and great identification, good read. Uh, real quick, I, on the Kirtland side of things with the younger players, and Coach Laverde talked about this before the game, because of how long the playoffs are, these minutes are actually very valuable too because you want your first-string guys, and this, if you're going to go six weeks, they got to get some rest. You know, they got to be able to, you know, they don't need to maximize all the minutes here. So these minutes with the young guys playing and able to perform, these are important minutes for the entire team as well. And Maddox is going to be a pass. Looking over the top, he's got a receiver. It's caught turning inside and a touchdown. 1A play on the outside. That was number 17, Noah Runyon, who caught that touchdown pass from Max Paul. 25 yards for a touchdown. And a great. And. Wow, yeah, they're going to say no. We stopped short. Yeah, wow, how about that's, that? That's, I was thinking that too. I was just wondering. You know, if that was if that was the case, but yeah, it's just that and that would have been a tough play though if he was. I was gonna say, look like he reached his arms and got through the end zone. It should be six and it is. It's gonna be officially six now. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so. that was that was a touchdown pass, folks. So yeah, they're gonna go for two here. And up on the right side breaking through and Kyle Heights snuffs that one out. So the two-point conversion attempt is unsuccessful. So, so real, real quick, I wonder because I wasn't one hundred percent clear. I wonder if if was it discussed whether or not th that was a score at first, or was it called back? Or that is a great question <laughs> that we do not know the answer towards. Uh, I. There wasn't a lot of doubt from our angle, from what we saw, because we saw running able to turn his body and get into the end zone, but maybe they thought that he had stepped out a few yards before. I'll just but put it to you this way. We're not disputing a, a no. score no. A, a, you know, it, that it put 53 points on the board. Well, I'll tell you what, though. Great pass uh, from Max Paul. I, You know what, though? The, the, the route, too, by running, that was, it was a great effort. Mm -hmm. First off, his speed, able to beat both defenders there, and, and his balance to be able to maintain – and get in the end zone uh, to score. And, again, these are valuable minutes that, A, the young guys are getting, and, B, the older guys are getting the necessary rest as they await who they're going to face in the Region 21 uh, final next week. Keep you guys up to date on uh, who 
I could be moving on there. He'd Who? sound like an owl. Who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's third quarter of the game uh, between Mogador and Mineral Ridge. It's two schools that will be looking to face most likely Curtin. Curtin went after tonight now. 13-7. Uh, Mogador still on top by just six points in the third quarter of that matchup. If you're wondering, by the way, too, 28-7. Perry on top of Garrettsfield Garfield. Third quarter of their game, too. More CVC action. That's a line drive kick. That will be eventually fielded by Heights on their own 15. And brought it to just past the 30-yard line. So decent starting field position. Able to hold on to the ball this time, too, for Heights. And that's where the Red Bulls will take over. Dutis on the uh, kickoff return. All right, so here we go. Another chance for the Red Wolves offense. I imagine most of the starters are going to hang out. Mm -hmm. Talking about the seniors, of course. Fletcher Sturgill, Francis Connors. Trying to put together a couple more successful drives before the end of this ball game. We're already halfway through the third quarter. Double, I mentioned, if you're new to the broadcast or new to watching high school football. Yeah, running clock with the scores above 30-point difference in the second half of play. The Knights has the ball in their own 31. Looking to pass from the outside. That one is going to be caught. Breaking on the sideline, cutting through. A little bit of a juke move down at near midfield. Solid catch and run. That's 24. Zach Unger, junior receiver, six foot, 150 pounds, able to make the play. That was a good ball. That was a good ball thrown. Uh, good angle, good spiral uh, there. And, you know, something that this defense, you know, these young kids, you know, they're going to learn too. Like, hey, there's speed on the outside. And even in that situation, maybe you want to push the receiver out of bounds a little bit there. But that's getting accustomed to varsity football speed. So Barrett in motion. Maybe delayed handoff and some room to run, breaking through left side inside the 50 down to the 45-yard line. Solid a run there by Michael Norton, senior. We'll turn the corner and get about nine. Yeah, and a great tackle. There on the outside, I believe that was Will Bates making a play, and the sidelines excited about that uh, there. Again, if he did not make that play, that could have been a huge, huge game uh, for Cuyahoga Heights. It really goes both ways. You talk about Kurt Lund's younger players getting experience on offense, defense too, finding some spots. Spared in motion. And off Connors on the inside trying to get the first down. He maybe got bad to the line of scrimmage. They make him like a half a yard on that play, double A. It's going to bring up third and short. Yeah, again, that th th that pressure there. And there's an opportunity here for, you know, the defense. They get able to get the stop here, but Cuyahoga Heights, we talked about it going into this third quarter, getting a, you know, the halftime break really is just more of getting your minds back right and getting a drive right down the field. They got two plays to do it to get the first down. Yep, so getting third and short, about a yard. And it's going to be Barrett who gets the end around on the carry. He's got some room to run. Barrett breaking right side. He turns inside the 40, still on his feet, and gets pushed out of bounds just past the 30-yard line of Kirtland. It's all a gain of about. It should be 15 yards. Yeah, and I've been impressed. You know, we've seen it here, and we've definitely seen it at the Independence game we had earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. His speed, Eddie Barrett, uh, has been really, really impressive uh, for the senior. 5'10", and he is very agile, like with the hips. Able to move, he has the speed, and if he has that supporting blocking, he could do some damage like he just did on the outside of the perimeter. Yeah, Eddie Barrett is a uh, in speed threat. Only his third carry tonight. He's got 12 yards, including that 15-yard run and a couple of negative plays. Was able to put something positive on the board. And now Connors on the inside trying to shuffle through, still churning those legs away. Solid run by Francis Connors, give him about roughly six to seven yards. Best carry of the day. And in, with with Connors and just again, just the physicality, you know, with him that he provides. 18th carry of the ball game for Connors, only 44 yards. Been tough sliding until that last run double you mentioned. Longest one of the game, about seven. I mean, Connors, they've just been able to keep him in check for the most part. Well, we, between the tackles against his current one defense is tough. Yeah, Kyle. Remember when the first stringers were in, you had you had more athletic defensive linemen. Connors with the carry to the outside. He's able to break this one through. Connors turns the corner and is brought down. Almost like he lost his footing there around the 10-yard line. So give Connors about a 15-yard gain. That's now his longest run of the night, and it's going to be first and goal for Cuyahoga Heights. Curious if he lost his footing there or it was really, I don't know if it was an intentional slide 
Don't um, get hurt type thing. Is, are we well. talking about the basketball season with Connors possibly? Maybe some wrestling going on or – a little bit of this, a little bit of that. He might that, be doing both. Who knows? Who Connors knows? is everything at this point, yeah. <laughs> who knows? It, very true. Hand off on the inside. Connors with another carry. He's able to push that ball down to about the four, so he cuts the down to goal distance in half now. But it's inter interesting you bring that up, too, because sometimes, you know, you think about these deep runs, you know, like, winter sports is practicing right now. Well, yeah, tryouts Ooh. were like last week for basketball yeah. for most schools in mm -hmm. the uh, Northeast Ohio. Uh, ended up playing with some kids over at Seven Hills Recreation Center near Northeast Ohio, obviously by downtown Cleveland, not too far from there. And uh, a couple of kiddos from uh, Holy Name and St. Ignatius stopping by. You weren't trying to school those kids, were you? Uh, you know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Second and goal. Carry inside and in for a touchdown. Francis Connor is able to get in 4-6. Four, Four-yard score on his 21st carry. Connors gets in, and Heights puts six more on the board. And that's what you want. If you're Calgary Heights, that's what you want. A sustained drive down the field. Obviously, this game's not going the way that you want to. Uh, but you want to end the season, end your football season the right way. And, you know, you don't want to end it with that blitz to happen in the second quarter. So... Good drive down the field, get some points on the board, and maybe they may get the extra point here. Michael Pastor Kiewitz lining up the extra point. Had his first uh, one go low and left, second one on the way. This one is also low, but it is good. Pastor Kiewitz puts it through, and the score now 53-13. to The Red Wolves get back on the scoreboard here on CBC TV. Hey, reminder, of course, uh, our presenting sponsor for the program, of course, is the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery. It's doctors Keith Schneider, Don Lewis, and Joe Weber. Got to meet uh, Dr. Don in the, uh, yeah. in the booth today. Great to see Don first, Lewis. Spent the whole first half with us. How about that? Again, uh, of course, hey, if you're wondering, your specialties, well, it's a lot, but they do include dental surgery and implants, corrective jaw and facial surgery, and trauma reconstruction. You know what? For all of your oral surgery needs, do yourself a favor. Visit the Ohio Center for Oral Facial and Implant Surgery website. That's www.ohsurgery.com. And as always, thank you for your support. That's your Green Valley Conference and CBC TV. I want to point out something here, Kyle. I want you to look right now at Coach Laverde uh, right by the score bar. Um, you see his head on the score bar. But the smile on his face, because he, you know, he's pointing out on the sidelines, all right, you worked hard to practice, you worked hard to practice, you worked hard on the scout team. Come on out, come on out, come on out. Mm. You know, this is, this, is a, this is a neat time right now. You know, because you feel good rewarding the kids. Yeah. You know, for their efforts and practice. Because sometimes when you're on like scout team, or you know, you sometimes you may not feel like you know you're the main reason for winning, but you're just as important because mm. you're part of the practice plan and you work hard and you're giving the looks of the other team. And it was just cool to see that on Coach Laverde's face to smile. It's awesome to see that ball going to be pooched out to the right side, taken. And it's dropped. It's still live. Never blew it dead. Was it still in bounds? It was. And Kyle Gahayat's going to get the ball at the 20-yard line. I thought it was close, but the ball stayed in bounds, and the Red Wolves are going to take back over possession. It needed one more bounce oh. to go out of bounds. Wow. Legitimately one more bounce. It stayed right there at that part of the field, and Kyle Gahayat's is going to get the football back. Sure, uh, Coach Zach. Norenberg, fantastic call on special teams. A little bit of a pooch kick, take advantage of some of the youth there. The clock is going to roll down, and that is going to end the third quarter. 53-13 the score, but again, some positive notes to close out the uh, the game in the third quarter for the Red Wolves. Now again, deep in Kirtland territory. Last time they really scored again, we could still have a few more touchdowns on the horizon here, double A. Could very well. You know, you know, we was just saying, you know, you want to get the young guys an opportunity, you know, but... You know, it's the, it, can be, it can be a little frustrating if something like that happens, but a learning experience, and you, know, you can, when you're up 40, you can eat that. It's easier to eat that up when you're up 40 <laughs> compared to if you're only up by 20. I'm going to give a shout-out to Coach uh, Nuremberg, too, actually. Helped him out mm. uh, with uh, with ADT, new family moving into the Parma area. There you go. So happy to help him out. Hopefully everything's going well with those guys. Let's catch up with them a little bit later on tonight. But, uh, hey, great call on special teams, too. A couple gotta, of times we've seen that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, you don't want to kick that to Will Beers. <laughs> right. But uh, in that situation, knowing the personnel on the field, maybe someone who's not used to 
taking those kick returns. Great call, and uh, Kyle Guide's able to get that ball back. Well, we've seen it the last couple of weeks with Kirtland. Uh, well, you know, and, and Kirtland has done it on their end, just the directional kick. Mm. And there's some strat- There's a lot of strategy with it at this level, at the high school football level. Right. Yeah, so again, Heights going to have the ball on the Kirtland 21-yard line. I say it every week, folks. You never know. Crazy things have happened in high school football in the great state of Ohio. Well, this would be the craziest. Definitely would be his Sturgill under center. He's going to look and throw to his left side. Still looking, going to throw the ball. It is tipped and eventually incomplete. Couldn't tell because the back was sure in the target on the uh, little swing pass. And falling incomplete. I wonder there. And... Blitos, if that's 31, I believe that's Porter. There you go. Yeah, Kyle Porter to the uh, the junior tight end who crossed the middle of the field on that route and tipped the ball a little bit. Maybe it bounced, hit the ground, bounced back up, and he tried to make the play. But those things where you try to maybe kick it off your shoe, <laughs> yeah, it back in. Nevertheless, going to bring up a second down. Back to the bread and butter is Connors at the middle. 22nd carry of the night goes for. Yeah, about roughly three to four yards, so it's going to bring up third down and manageable. And think about, you know, this, you know, you're doing this for your seniors, and, you know, what this senior class has meant for Coach Al Martin, for this Cuyahoga Heights program, and first off for Francis Connors and the seniors to still be out here right now, you know, just to ride this thing out, very, it's incredible. And Sturgill, one of those seniors in the shotgun. He's got two wide left. Looking, throwing on a slant. That one's going to be caught, breaking through, trying to spin past the first down. He's got it inside the 10. Solid catch there by Zach Unger. His yeah, second of the game. Yeah, he's made a couple plays, you know, to this point. And the Red Wolves, way back earlier in the game when they were in the red zone after the block punt, took a couple – Took a couple plays for them to get in the end zone, but they found something man to man in the in the end zone. And they're getting their signals in and they have the opportunity here. Yep. Sturgill tonight, double A two, uh, six of eleven, fifty one yards. He had that touchdown pass in the uh, first half and has the one interception. No need to talk too much about passing stats, but another throw inside. That one's gonna get in for a six. Touchdown, Connors. Francis Connors catches that one. Able to just turn his body in for a nice little eight-yard score. And, again, Heights, another quick score on the board. Absolutely. And, you know, they're moving through, you know, to this point. And, you know, we're going to see what happens here. You know, here again. A lot of teams run this formation for extra points. But will they actually snap it is the question. The yeah. answer is no. Yeah, and, and <laughs> in most cases, the answer better be no. <laughs> Michael Pastor-Kewitt's going to line up the extra point. He's one for two on the evening. They're going to drive this one through as well. Snap good. Hold down. Kick on the way. And it is no good. Going to go wide to the right. Looks like it had the height and distance. Just a little far to the right. And that's where the score is going to stay. 53-19. to 19. With 8.34 to go in the ball game. Of course, a reminder, well, Heights has been able to get on the board twice here in the uh, last few minutes. Uh, so let's talk about our scoreboard sponsor, Independence Business Supply. They're an Ohio-owned and operated company with full-service facilities right here in Cleveland, Ohio, of course, capable of shipping supplies anywhere, though, across the country. IBS is a business products dealer providing you with a single source for office products, facility and break room supplies, printing, promotional products, and furniture, too. Hey, visit orderibs.com to... Learn more about their products and their amazing customer service. Talk about it. It's about prod right now for the Red Wolves AA. Not going down without a fight here. Uh, Kurt one, of course, uh, not able to hold on to that last kickoff, giving the Red Wolves a chance for a short field to make them pay with six points. Well, Co- Coach Laverde right now, you know, in the huddle, making the adjustments like, hey, all right, kick return time again. Make sure everybody's in the right spot. What are the assignments? You know, catch the football. <laughs> the crazy part we, we is... we got to catch the football. Well, yeah. boy, we talk about scoring 53 points in a game in football at any level at this point. And if I told you there was only three pass attempts from Kirtland tonight, it's unbelievable. 
And it's the backup quarterback that threw the only touchdown pass. I, well, well, yeah, that's <laughs> pretty, co- pretty, pretty cool. In the day of spread offense, it's, Kurt was a throwback, man. We talk about the different weapons they have. And, again, if it wasn't for Max Paul's 25-yard dot to uh, <laughs> for, that 20, for that touchdown here in this uh, second half, we'd be talking about all rushing scores and returns. Big hit on a, uh, a block and a short return for the Hornets. Ball going to get put down at about the 18-yard line. That's where Kirtland's second team offense will take back over. Yeah, you can tell it was a little bit of nerves from the second team. You know, just, you know, the kick return, some new spots. You know, you're not really used to being in those situations. Again, you know, with all these kids out here, there is a difference between, you know, J, you know, varsity speed, Friday night speed, and it's just something you get used to. And, again, it's good experience to go through these growing pains right now. And, again, uh, led by Max Paul, the junior quarterback, actually a year older than Jake Laverty, the starter, the sophomore. So Paul's actually been in the program a little while longer. Showed some poise, obviously, in a touchdown pass the last time he was on the field. Handing off left side. A yeah, short gain, pushing forward for a little extra. And that, again, uh, was like 29 for Kerwin. I'm going to say that that was Ryan. And he's running the ball, yeah. So I think what's interesting, you know, as Kirtland moves, they're going to move forward, you know, with this, can, can their guys relatively stay healthy and keep their mind sharp? you know, for these next few weeks or for the next game and then keep going from there. Right back on the inside. Uh, that is 26, Carter Luzar, who got back to the line of scrimmage. And force a third and about six. Halfway through this fourth quarter again, 53-19 the score. Kyle Heights has been able to put together a couple of scores in the second half. Uh, Kurt has been able to match one of them uh, with a touchdown with the second unit. Want to try and keep the ball for as long as they can and keep that offense from Kyle Heights off the field. And again, a lot of these fans, obviously everyone on Kirtland's side sticking around, and most on Kyle Heights' side sticking around. Didn't call that snap. Heights able to avoid the offsides. Pitch to the outside, some room to run. Luzar. Pass the 30 down to the 34-yard line. And a first down for Kirtland. 12 yards for Luzar. Great run there on the outside. And again, got the blocking. And I was a little concerned. Like, hey, make sure you hold out to the football. <laughs> hold out to the football. They was clearly going for the strip. A little loose there. Uh, but got the yardage. Got the first down. And Carter Luzar, 6-foot, 165-pound freshman. How He's about in- it? He's going to be a kid to watch out for in the coming years for Kirtland. you got a feeling you're going to be calling his name. We might be doing that too a little bit. Yeah, future. we might be. Maybe even next year. Never know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he would be ready to go. He's getting those reps now. Those are all important. Get hand off on the inside. And that was running again on the carry. Got yeah, roughly about four to five yards. I'll give him a full five. Yeah, Way to finish there. Get a couple subs defensively for the Red Wolves. Henry Clay, number 77, one of the guys coming off the field. Henry Clay did a lot of great work tonight. Did, was Did a lot of great work when we saw him against Independence mm-hmm. back in week six. It's been a tough, uh, tough sliding for this uh, defense for the Red Wolves. Hand off on the left side, turning up field. Big run through pass midfield. And that is Luzar again, another first down, gain of about 13. Getting that big run up the gut. As more subs are going to come in, as you start to see some of these seniors who have been with this program for a while. Nick Novak, number 73. Jeremiah Reed, number 53, both seniors. How long until we see an offensive lineman get a carry? That's what I want to know. Yeah, that's a good question. We've seen that a few times this year. 
even in these playoffs, believe it or not. What was it? Um, we saw two weeks ago, maybe? Yeah. I think we're due. <laughs> oh, all, all these ties, they all roll together now. <laughs> And this is going to be a keeper. Paul going to cut back up the middle, fake the handoff, and get a solid gain of about roughly seven to eight yards. Max Paul, his first carry of the evening. Yeah, I believe we saw um, a lineman carry to the Geneva Hawking game, the playoff game of Spire a couple weeks ago. That was fantastic. I just want to point that out. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Absolutely. There was, there was a league called Tri-City Football in the Parma area where I grew up, and if you were over a certain weight, you weren't allowed to touch the football. Uh, when I see those big men get those carries, it just warms my heart. A little well, bit, we yeah. say like a track and field, you got the big man for a uh, relay. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, I want those, you know. <laughs> it's Ryan Camey with the carry there. Like, it almost would be, be fair, like with Kirtland, to have the, the big man relay just because, like, those guys are like fast and, and, and athletic. <laughs> Would be fair. <laughs> Speaking of curling on, on their side of things right now, you have uh, mass substitutions there. So getting more kids into the football game. I believe that was a quarterback sneak on the inside. Yeah, Paul trying to push forward. And actually, no, that's number 19 in the game now. That's Mario Lorber. Third string quarterback in the game. Gets a carry. Thought maybe the forward progress would be enough. Just a yard short. Yeah, so a fourth down conversion attempt as we kick under two minutes to go in this ballgame. Kirtland going to advance into the next round of the playoffs, the regional finals. Going to give you guys an update here shortly about who they're playing as we move deeper into that game. And up on the left side. Luzari able to cut past the 40, close to a first down. We'll see where they spot him. And they're going to say he got it, first down. Luzar only needed uh, about a yard. He got about two. 123 to go. Uh, Mogador and Mineral Ridge fighting for the right to face Kirtland next week in the regional championship. Uh, Mogador currently up top 13-7 late in that third quarter. So that's a close game. Yeah, I think Kirtland's going to fight out of the bus. Uh, <laughs> who's going to win that football game? There we go. Big man with the carry. We saw it. There you Finally, go, Kyle. 65. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan Pawalczyk with the carry, the junior. 5'9", 285. That a boy. I'd love to there see it. There you go. <laughs> Getting that carry. Love and, it. You know, we talked about it multiple times. Hey, he time. got three yards. That is yeah. not bad. That man has not touched a football in three years. And he has begged the entire year, Coach, I've done everything you needed me to do. Please <laughs> give me the football and let it be the last play before our team goes into victory formation. As the motion as the knee is taken, and that should uh, be able to do it for us here. Clock going to roll out. Final score from the Dornia High School, 53-19. to the Kirtland Hornets improved a 12 and 1 overall in the year. They're heading to the regional final. Double A 14 now consecutive regional semifinal wins for the Hornets for the Cuyahoga Heights Red Wolves. Two losses this season, both coming to Kirtland. Yeah, and, and Kirtland's just handling business in dominant uh, fashion. And this is their home away from home here in Macedonia. Like they, they know how to handle business. And we'll be, let's just be real about. You know, Kirtland and, you know, Perry's winning big right now in Division 5. Mm. You got two teams out of the CVC who could very well represent this conference um, in Canton. And right now, as far as rankings, Kirtland is the top team in Division 6 and Perry the top team in Division 5. And it was just a teamwork. It was teamwork from everybody on Kirtland's side of things, and they get you mentally. You know, just, again, just when you think, you're back in it. They get you the kick return. They open it up. It's a blitz. And before you know it, they're up by, what, nearly 40, what, 40 points? 41 points at halftime? So you do have that. Uh, Coach Al Martin and, and Cuyahoga Heights, a great, great season. Just unfortunately, they you know, not able to crack the code on Kirtland. And Kirtland's the only team that they have not been able to beat this year, otherwise their record is perfect uh, to this point. But you know, 
uh, they weren't able to get Connors going just because it was a maximum effort to stop him. Yeah, Connors, 22 carries tonight, 71 yards and a touchdown. Talk about heights, 10-2, and two, two losses. Double A mentioned to Kirtland, tough uh, way to end their season, but obviously still some talent on that roster. Looking forward to see Heights and Coach Elmark next year. They're definitely going to be back with the vengeance. For the Hornets, they're going to move on and await the winner of that matchup between Mogador and Mineral Ridge coming up next week. Uh, Double A, final thoughts on the game before we head out of here? Uh, the, the last thing, first off, again, credit to the parents and the student section. Uh, you know, on both sides, obviously, you know, full force when you're winning, but when you're losing, it's easy to just wrap it up and go home. And it's cold. You might run, you know, the stadium might run out of hot chocolate, which was great here, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they might run out of hot chocolate. It's like, oh, I'm good, but you know, they stuck around and supported their teammates, their kids, yeah. and those are things that you know you're gonna remember those moments um, for a long time. But uh, Kirtland, they're they're an operation. They're a machine. <laughs> You know, starts at first. They say it starts at first grade. I think it starts sooner. Uh, <laughs> Maybe out of the womb. We can't confirm that or not. So. But yeah. and, uh, and, and and they take care of business. They did, so, they did so tonight as well, right, Double A? Yeah. Final score, 53-19 here from Nordonia High School. Kirtland moves on to the regional final in Division Six, Region 21. In case you're wondering, Double A mentioned it to Perry on top of Garfield. Garrettsville Garfield, 35-7 to moving into the fourth quarter. And that game looking like Perry's going to advance as well in Division 5. So looking forward to that. Of course, want to thank uh, the beautiful hosts here at Adorno High School for having us for this uh, this contest here at the neutral site. want to thank all our cast and crew, everyone down in the truck, everyone running the cameras above us. Appreciate all the work you guys do as well. For Double A, Anthony Alfred, I'm Kyle Cornell. That's going to wrap our, our coverage uh, for this evening. Will we see you next week? Maybe. We'll, we'll see. keep you guys posted. If not, it's been a pleasure calling games for you this season here on ChagrinValleyConference.com. We'll see you, of course, for basketball season for sure. If not, Double A will be around next week to <laughs> well, bug you guys a little bit more. So 53-19, <laughs> the final. Kirtland gets the win. Good night from Nordonia.